Hi there, I'm Tyler, and today I'm going to show you guys uh, some of my uh, live streaming equipment because recently you might have noticed uh, on Tyler Tech there was Minithon was live streamed two years in a row. There was the Dodge for Dementia tournament at my school. You might have also seen uh, live streaming done on the Greensburg Sports Network. Uh, I did that with the same equipment, and I did some sports ball games and some uh, two graduations. Uh, and that was all done using this equipment. And I just wanted to show you kind of what it is, because it's not really like a professional setup. It's better than a webcam, but not the best setup you can get. So this is kind of like live streaming on a budget. Uh, and I just wanted to show you maybe a YouTube channel starting up. You want to do some live streaming. Uh, if you want to get into the live streaming events, this is a good setup to start with. Uh, or even schools. Uh, I also use this setup to do some live streaming for my school on their YouTube channel. You can check it out. It's GSHS TV3. Uh, but yeah, I did some live streaming there too. You can probably put something like this together for $500 or less. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. So starting out in this big bag right here. First thing, uh, it's actually what I'm wearing. Hello. I got a lav mic on now. I don't know if you can notice, I tried to stick it in the shirt. But uh, I have two of them. This is the other one. It's a five fine lavalier mic. Uh, it's nice, it's small. Oh, there's instructions. So yeah, it's just like a little belt pack. This is what you wear on you. You have the mic that you plug into it. And then there's this receiver, which will plug into either a soundboard or it can go straight into your camera. It comes with an adapter. Uh, and the battery life on these is pretty good. Uh, but since I know that uh, I use them for extended periods of time, what I actually went and did, since I have two of these and you need batteries for the receiver and the transmitter, I uh, actually went on Amazon and got myself this pack of reusable batteries that comes with the charger. And it's the exact amount I need. And it's only like 10 bucks. So it's a Bonai smart charger. Uh, and I'm going to try and leave links to most of this stuff in the description. Uh, some of this stuff is old, some of it they might not make anymore, but most of the stuff should have links down in the description as long as I remember to do that. Uh, Alright, so next up, I was talking about a soundboard. This soundboard is actually a Behringer something 502. This is a, a bit older. I know that they still make ones like this. I don't know if they make the exact model though. But for like 50 bucks, you get like three inputs realistically. Uh, and it works pretty good. Uh, actually, uh, let me go. I, so what I do is, especially for sports, uh, I use this for the away game so I don't have to lug a ton of stuff because I usually just ride the team bus there and there's no room anyway. So. Let me, let me go grab something real quick. All right, so uh, this one, this is a big one. Uh, here it is. Uh, it's almost the size of my chest, it's probably a little bit bigger. Uh, this is a Mackie 1604-VLZ Pro. This is a 16 channel mixer. Uh, I got it used for a pretty good price, but realistically, any mixer like this is probably going to run you at least maybe you might be able to get it for under a hundred, something like this. Uh, realistically, you're probably going to be spending closer to 200 maybe, unless you get a really good deal. So you probably aren't going to need 16 channels starting out. I don't use 16 channels. I still only use like two, maybe three which this has enough to do, but I like the big board because on here for EQ, I only have a high end and a low end and that only controls, I think that just controls channel one. I don't think there's any EQing on channel two or three. So because of that, this board doesn't give me control because some of the mics I use aren't that good. These five fine ones, I probably had to tune them up a little bit. I think these were settings from that. And I did have to do some tuning on here to make these sound good. So I probably went in and edited to make this sound as good as it does. So the finer detail you can get on these and different things like aux sense so you can hear what's happening and what other people are saying. 
Stuff like that is really useful. And this has the ability to like boost the sound better. Uh, and this is what I use for like all home games. I used it for graduation this year. Uh, I used it for mini phone. I put it on a cart. Uh, I don't know if I have a picture of that. I might have one from last year still somewhere. But I just got like a little cart. I had a tripod mounted on it. I had my laptop on it and I had this on the shelf below it and it worked out pretty well. Uh, and I'd have like, actually here. Ah, uh, let me put that down. Where is that? I used this nice 80 foot extension cord plus this 10 foot extension cord plus this 15 foot power brick. So you can never have too much power cable is what I've learned from my experience because uh, I did a baseball game once. The only baseball game I ever did and I found out the morning it was happening that I was going to do it because it was a uh, playoff game for my school. So I didn't even know if there was power, if there was Wi-Fi. So as soon as I found out, I went outside to the baseball field, found out that there was Wi-Fi that I could connect to. It was uh, not the best Wi-Fi, but I was able to connect to it. And it pretty much worked out, except uh, power. I had just enough power cable to get from the dugout to the top of the hill at my school where I had to be, to be out of the weeds. Plus that was with some power cables I had to find around the school. So you can never have too much power. Uh, oh, here, this goes along with the soundboards. So what this is, is on soundboards for the main output, there is a left and a right channel. So this is a, another cable from Behringer. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I think it's like the line two or something like that, but I'll, I'll put a link to this in the description, but it takes your uh, two outputs and you just plug them in here. And it doesn't really matter if you get left and right the right way. And it puts it to USB so you can use it uh, and just plug it in as like a, an extra sound cable on your computer. And it's been really useful. Uh, I've had some issues with this. I think one of the channels is going bad. So I've been using mono audio. Uh, but for 20 bucks, it does what it needs to do. I'd be okay replacing this every year, even if it does break like that. Uh, oh, here, this is the other microphones. So this is a uh, cheap pile thing. I've had it for quite a while, but it's just two wireless mics. Uh, they take like a nine volt square battery. And yeah, one of the antennas is missing. That's how long I've had it. Uh, this is what I used before I got the lav mics and the sound came out pretty clean. Uh, one of the mics is a little bit higher than the other uh, volume wise, even when they're set at max. But like any cheap mics will work. You can even use wired. I just find wireless is better for my setup. But if you want to use, if you have like a $10 wired mic you can get, go for it. Uh, you can make stuff sound better by tuning it, uh, even with cheap equipment. Next, oh, this is a new addition. So for my HDMI cable, I used to just have the little six foot one that I got on Amazon because I, I have a Canon camera. So it goes mini HDMI to full size HDMI. And what I did is I bought a 25 foot HDMI cable. So it's normal HDMI on both ends. I got this little adapter for a few bucks on Amazon. It's made by Amazon Basics where it goes from the uh, mini HDMI to full size HDMI here. So I could just, I have a 25 foot cable too. I just take that off. And on the other end, this is what, one of my favorite things in this setup. Uh, and it's what actually allows me to connect an HDMI camera to my laptop. It's the Elgato Cam Link. I think this is like 120, 130 bucks on Amazon somewhere. Uh, they have a new version too that does 4K. So you just plug this in, it has an HDMI input. So you could realistically plug in anything like another computer outputting HDMI. You could plug in a video game system or use a camera like I do. And you just plug it into the end of your HDMI cable and plug the other end in the computer. And it shows up as like a webcam source. And uh, so I use OBS and it just shows up in there. So now that I showed you this thick cable, uh, this is actually a kind of handle for the camera I use. So it's just a like a $15 camera handle on Amazon. Uh, I think I still have the information for my order, so I'll put it in the description. But what it does is you have a little screw down here and it is screw, you put your camera on, screw it in, 
Then you screw your tripod, the quick release plate, into the bottom of this, and then it sticks on your tripod. And what this does is it adds a little more weight and bulk. Uh, and my camera doesn't have a hot shoe mount that I normally use for live streaming, so that's good because uh, that adds one. And you can buy more that have like three on the top. And it adds more weight and stability so that when I run the thicker cables, it doesn't just pull the camera around. Now, I think that's everything in this bag that has to do with live streaming that isn't just a power cable. But this, this is actually, I carry this around school nowadays. Uh, used to carry a big backpack with a bunch of camera and computer stuff, but I switched to this to put like my laptop and everything in. It's nice and padded. I'll put the link to this. It's made by Newer, I think is how you pronounce that. N-E-W-E-R. It's a nice camera bag. Uh, has a laptop slot. But uh, this is actually the camera I use. It's the Canon Vixia HF R800. Uh, it's a $200 camera and it has a full HD HDMI output. So it works perfect for my needs because what originally happened is, so right now I'm filming this on my T5i. I had that and it has an HDMI output, but the HDMI output only outputs in like 480p. So it was better than using a webcam or hooking up my phone through a USB cable, uh, but it still didn't look great. So for $200, the HDMI outputs full HD, uh, it records in full HD, and if you want to see sample footage of this, you can go check out any of the newer live streams from like, I think anything in 2019 that I've live streamed was using this. Uh, but that is a good value. And then, yeah, on the software side, I just use OBS and there's a ton of tutorials. I use it on my laptop. And you don't need a super powerful laptop because, so mine, does, it's just Intel integrated graphics. It has an i7. It's a few years old, it's an HP. But it runs fine on that. It sometimes gets a little bit laggy when I have my scoreboard overlay and stuff on it too. But I don't really notice it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's everything in the live streaming setup. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments uh, down below. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to support Tyler Tech, by the way, you can uh, go to tylertech.tk slash shop and you can buy some, uh, some merch. We have some different shirts, some hoodies, stuff like that. I think there's more options on the store now. Uh, I'll put something on the screen. Uh, but yeah, you can go, the link will be down in the description to that too. And links to all of this stuff will be in the description as well, that I, or what I can find to put in the description. But uh, yeah, so thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.